Lift up your voice in song to the mighty one. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb. Lift up your voice in song to the Mighty One. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer. We always start our programs proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord. So at the name of Jesus, every knee must bend, every tongue proclaim. Say it with me. Just glorify Him. Don't be ashamed of the one that died for you. Jesus Christ is Lord. Say it so everyone can hear you, especially next door, especially down the street. Jesus Christ is Lord. Glad you're with us. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer, and this is the third part of a Life in the Spirit seminar. And the title of our teaching today is New Life, and we have a key word. The first teaching, the key word was expect. If you missed it, just get it on a videotape. And uh, then our second teaching, was the word was need. We must, we must know that we need Jesus. We need a Savior, and we need everything He promised us. We need the Holy Spirit. Now today the word is thirst. Thirst. And this is the big scripture. Before we pray, we're going to read this one. I find that of all those parts in the Bible, I would say that this scripture is the most practical in leading people to the Holy Spirit. And this is John chapter 7, verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood up and he cried out, If, notice there is a condition, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me. You have to come to Jesus. Let him drink who believes in me. Scripture has it. From within him rivers of living water shall flow. What, what's he talking about? Rivers of living water. Here he was referring to, to the Spirit, whom those that came to believe in Him were to receive. All right, let's pray. Father, we just pray that we would thirst for the living waters, that we would have a parching thirst, a tremendous desire to receive the Holy Spirit. Lord, may we want to receive the Holy Spirit more than we want anything else on the face of this earth, more than we want food, more than we want acceptance, stronger than any sexual desire, stronger than the desire to be powerful, stronger than the desire to be greedy, stronger than the desire for any material possessions. May our strongest desire be a thirst, a thirst for the Holy Spirit. Remove all obstacles. Satan, we stop you. Jesus be Lord right now. Lord, that one right now. He's not thirsting because he is addicted. Addicted not, not to alcohol, not to drugs, but to work. Addicted to television. Addicted to basically selfish pleasures. Set the captives free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. This is the key. If why is there seven weeks in the Life in the Spirit seminar? Why do we wait to the fifth week before we pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit? Well, because most people are not really that desirous of receiving the Spirit. And uh, several weeks, uh, sometimes you'll have a little book that you read something out of every day and pray about it and read the scriptures every day. After several weeks, we start to thirst. And when you pray for a person who's thirsting for the Spirit, bang, there it is. 
when you, you could do anything you want for a person that's not thirsting for it, and it wouldn't really do that much. Thirsting for the Spirit, that is what it's all about. Now, look at Mark chapter 1, verse 8. John the baptizer says, There's going to be a person to come after me who is greater than I. I'm not worthy to unfasten his sandal strap. He will baptize you, not just in water like I did, but he'll baptize you in fire and in the Holy Spirit. Now, the picture of this, being baptized in the Spirit, is a picture of being immersed in water. Now, the issue is not the water. You can get the baptism in the Spirit without any water being involved at all. The issue is not the water, but the issue is being immersed in, not water, but being immersed in the Spirit, wanting the Spirit so much, and you wanting the Spirit so powerful. I hope you come to a point where you say, I can't go another minute without the Spirit being as powerful as possible in my life. When you really, really believe that in your heart, thirst for it inside, well, you won't go on another minute without the Spirit being as powerful as possible. The Spirit's going to move very powerfully. Why? Because if anyone thirst, So you might use this image of water. And to be baptized, to be immersed in something, you have to be pretty thirsty. Now, like, say you're, um, you're thirsty. Um, you've been uh, without any water or anything to drink for, for a few hours, and you're pretty thirsty. And here you go. There's a little, uh, little Dixie cup of water. Then there's this, there's this big, tall glass of water. Then there's this uh, bucket of water. Then there's this swimming pool. And then there's this river. Now, Dixie cup, tall glass, bucket. What did I say before? Uh, swimming pool and, and uh, river. Now, what are you going to do? Well, it depends on how thirsty you are. If you're really thirsty, if you're really, really thirsty, if you, if you just kind of like drag in there and just kind of say, I'm going to die if I don't get something to drink soon. I'm going to die. You know, you're not going to pick up the Dixie cup, I'll tell you that. You won't even go for the water. You know what you'll do? You'll dive into that river. You'll be immersed in the river. You'll be baptized. That's what word, the word baptism means. You'll be baptized in the river. Now, drinking that tall glass, that's not a baptism. That is taking a drink. But that's not a baptism. Baptism means to be immersed into something. Now, jumping in the swimming pool, that would be a baptism, but you could get an even greater immersion in the Holy Spirit. Now, as we said before, we're not talking about water here, but we're just using this image. Now, the Lord says, I want to baptize you in the Spirit. I want it to be rivers. He just says it in the plural, not just one river. I just said that for the sake of of uh, example, but it would be rivers of living water. I remember one preacher preaching on that, and he says, it's like the, if you've ever been to the Colorado River, when the Colorado's going down the Rockies and the water and the rapids are just, just so powerful, you know. He says, that's living water. That water is moving so fast, and the rapids are moving. He says, that's living water. And he says, Gee, will you just jump into it because you're so thirsty? Rivers, in the plural, of living water. Well, you need to be real thirsty. Some of you are pretty thirsty. That's why you're watching the program. But I'm praying that you get so much thirst, so thirsty that you'll just move up the ladder. Some of you say, well, you know, I, I'll probably go for a little, little glass of that stuff. You know, well, no, you need more thirst than that. You need more thirst than that. You might say, well, boy, I, I ran on up there. I took the bucket, and I just put it over my head. I, was, I just dunked, dunked that bucket over my head. Uh, you think you're thirsty. Well, you're probably thirsty compared to these people that aren't thirsty at all. But that ain't, that ain't what Jesus has in mind. If you really want what Jesus has in mind, you got to be a lot more thirsty than that, not more thirsty than other people, not more thirsty than you used to be. you got to do better than that. you got to really be thirsty. You got to want it so bad. You got to want it so bad that if, if I told you, pray nine days in the upper room, morning, noon, and night, pray nine days, you say, I'll do it. I'll pray nine years if I have to. 
See, that's being thirsty. If I say, repent, repent of everything, repent of everything. Tell God that if he gives you the spirit, you'll go to the ends of the earth. You'll go anywhere he wants you to. You'll give your life for him. You'll shed your blood for him. Say, I'll do it. I'll shed my blood. I'll give my life just so I can get the Holy Spirit. Well, now you're thirsty. You're the people we're talking about. You might say, well, I'm not that thirsty. See, that's, that's the whole issue. That's the whole issue here. When people get thirsty the way God wants them to get thirsty, they get the Holy Spirit the way God wants them to get the Spirit. All right? Do you understand that? Now, why aren't we so thirsty? God is not going to tell us, you need to be thirsty, but you're not going to be thirsty. Well, that puts us in an impossible situation. If God's not going to say, I want you to be thirsty, but I ain't going to help you get thirsty. Well, he's going to give us all the help we need to desire the Spirit more than anything else in the whole wide world. Well, then, if he's given us all the help we need, well, then, how come we're not thirsty? Well, very simply, a sin... Uh, we'll talk about that next time around, but uh, the worldly things. Galatians chapter 5, it says the flesh, our carnal desires, our worldly desires, are lust against the spirit, and the spirit lust against the flesh. The two are directly opposed. You know, when a person's just really getting into the ways of the world, they ain't that thirsty. I remember before I received the, I had stifled the Spirit after receiving the Spirit of my confirmation and baptism as I was a little kid. I really received the Spirit. I could see it in my life. But then I stifled the Spirit after moving in the Spirit for many years. And uh, the reason, the way I did it was just by being selfish, just a bunch of little petty pleasures, just sitting there watching TV. I stifled the Spirit. And, but before a new movement of the Spirit in my life in 1975, May of 1975, I... Uh, it was just kind of, I really didn't even plan this. It just kind of seemed to be a, a series of circumstances. It was partly my work and partly just the way I felt. But I ended up going on a long fast, not a total fast, but for several months, I just ate about one meal a day, which is really something unusual for me. But if somebody would have said, oh, you're going into a fast, I would just say, no, I don't know. I just got so much else on my mind. I haven't even got a chance to time to eat. But it, it was really, I never had anything like this happen to me in my whole life. But uh, I ended up fasting. Basically, I got put in a position. I was at school, and, and these kids, you know, were driving me crazy all day long, just absolutely nuts. I was supposed to be teaching these people. And, uh, and you know, when we got a break for lunch, you know, I said, I don't need to be sitting around in this, in this cafeteria with these kids continuing to drive me nuts. So then I went to the faculty dining room. But then I thought, well, this is about as bad as the kids. You know, I'm getting out of here. I don't need, I got, I've had, I've had people disrupting things all day long. I don't need to spend my lunch with more disruptions. So I thought, well, I'm just going to skip lunch. It ain't worth it. And then I, I was, I had to get up so early to have mass and everything before I would go to school and teach that, you know, I said, I can't get up early and eat, man. I'm too tired. I'm just going to skip that. I, uh, I'm going to sleep instead. So basically, because I was so uh, so sleepy, I, uh, I couldn't get up to eat. And because these kids were driving me crazy and the faculty members were, were, were contributing to it also, I didn't want to, you know, go through that chaos and have, have eat. So I ended up just kind of missing a few meals. But after I started, I wasn't really doing this in any kind of spiritual way, but after doing that, it really did. I started thirsting for the Spirit. It was gradual. So cut off the TV. If you're addicted, cut the wire. If you know how to splice wires, you know, kick the front of it in. But basically, come on, cut back on the carnal desires so that you can start getting a thirst for the things of the Spirit. Now, I'm going to say a few things about the Spirit and how the Spirit will work in your life. And, and a lot of times that will make you thirsty. I hope it does. You know, you've, as you hear all about the Spirit, it will make you thirsty. Like, say you're watching this television commercial. You've just finished eating. You've just drank uh, all this pop or something or, or soda water or beer or something, you know. 
And you know, you're, you don't need to drink anything, you're filled up. But there they come on TV and they are got this stuff to drink. And they're saying, oh man, this is the best stuff in the whole world. Everybody's real happy drinking this stuff. And they, 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 you know, they call it fire brood or something, or, or they say it's the Pepsi challenge, or they're saying something. You know, and everybody looks like they're really having a wonderful time drinking this stuff. And, uh, and you look at all that and say, wow, I've got to get something to drink. What, what happened? Why do you have to get something to drink? You just, you just had something to drink. Well, when you saw that stuff, it made you thirsty. Well, hopefully you can see some things about the Holy Spirit in the Bible that will make you thirsty. Like, uh, look for example, what good will it do if the Spirit is stirred up in your life? Now, you, most of you watching have already received the Holy Spirit in your baptism and confirmation, but the Spirit is stifled. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, don't stifle the Holy Spirit. The reason they say that is because we usually will do that. You command a person to, to not do something when you know they'll probably do it unless you command them not to. It also says in Ephesians 4, don't sadden the Holy Spirit. Why do they say don't do it? Well, because we'll do it if they don't, tell, if they don't command us not to. And so most of us are in that situation, but I'm telling you, if you can get the Spirit stirred up in your life, renewed, activated, you're going to get a closeness to God that right now God may seem kind of like an outer space to you and not very close at all. You pray and you just kind of like almost like broadcast uh, and radio. Kind of like so I'm putting it out on the airwaves. I hope somebody's tuning in. You know, you really have no sense of that direct communication with God. Like you go tell people and say, well, why don't you just talk to God about it? They say, talk to God about it. He don't talk. Or if he does, I don't hear. You can't talk to God. You can't have a com conversation with God. You can't have a dialogue with God. You can't really communicate with God, can you? Well, of course you can. I hope so. If you can't communicate with God, how can he be your Lord? Well, why did he become a man? If you can't communicate with God, now I understand there are difficulties in the communication, but we should be able to talk to God. We should be able to talk back and forth with God. We should be able to hear God. Now, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can't do that. You're right, but the Holy Spirit will revolutionize your prayer life through the gift of tongues. He will give you a desire for prayer, a desire for the Bible, a desire for the Eucharist you will have a new way of communication and a new zeal in communication with God. Would you like that? Instead of just being totally confused and just kind of trying to live on your own and, and wondering if God's even there and not being able to talk and not being able to find out what the truth of the matter is and being in darkness and confusion, would you like that? Well, most people say, yeah, I'd, I'd go for that. I think a lot of people look at themselves and say, boy, I'm disappointed in myself. Uh, I, I always wanted to be a really great guy and a great girl or a person that, that really was not all hung up and really something special, but well, I'm, I'm kind of messed up. Uh, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. I like to be a new person. I like to get a new star. I like to just be like brand new. I like to be, you know, just like a kid and not have to, you know, be all bogged down with years of big messes. Well, you know, look at Acts of the Apostles. These these. Apostles were messes. Hey, Peter denied Christ three times. The rest of them betrayed Christ. These guys were crazy. These guys had problems. These guys were proud. These guys were hung up. These guys were fearful. These guys were messed up. These guys were sinful. These guys were terrible. But they became like new people. And they went out and they proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ even to the ends of the earth. And you people looked at this. I can't believe these people. Are these the same ones I used to know? I can't believe what happened to these people. They got a whole new life. You can get a whole new life. I, some of you are sick of your life right now. and You should be sick of it. And the Lord will give you a new one. I want to read something from 1 Samuel 10. And verse 6, chapter 10, verse 6, 1 Samuel. Listen to this. Uh, the prophet Samuel tells Saul this. This is good. 1 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6. The Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, and you will join in their prophetic state, and you will be changed into another man. You will be changed into another man. Uh, 
lot of people say, I got to get reincarnated. I mean, there ain't going to be any reincarnation, so you might as well not wait for it. But you can become a new person by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you don't have to wait till you die. You can get it right now. Now, a lot of you say, the thing I need most of all is my marriage straight now. I'm, my marriage is turned out to be a curse to me. I can't stand my husband. I can't stand my marriage. I, I wish I was. I wish he, sometimes I hate to say this, but I just wish he'd be dead and I'd get out of this thing. Now, I know a lot of wives have confided to, to me on these matters, and they said, I've never told anybody because it sounds so terrible, but I, I really wish he'd be dead. I know I hate myself when I say this, but I just feel that way sometimes. You know, the Lord wants to give you better relationships. Some of you are so disappointed in uh, your children, and you've had a, a real alienation between you and your children. The Lord can bring a reconciliation, forgiveness, love, and a restoration of your marriage and of your parenting, of all relationships in your life. It says in the Bible, in John chapter 14 and chapter 16, it says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Now, truth doesn't mean just accurate information. Truth means true relationships. Be true to me. She's a true friend, okay? And that's what the Holy Spirit is. <sighs> Excuse me. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit will give you just transform relationships. You want a new marriage? Holy Spirit. You want to really raise these kids right? Holy Spirit. You want to forgive your father after what he's done? Holy Spirit. You want to be a changed person and get a new start in life? Holy Spirit. You want to be close to God and be able to talk to God instead of feeling like you're so isolated? Holy Spirit. You want power. How about that? You want power. What they, what they call the Holy Spirit in Luke 24. Jesus says, you wait right here in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. They, they, don't just, they don't call him all the time Holy Spirit. They just call him, sometimes they just call him power. They don't say powerful. They just say he's power. He's just power. He's power from on high. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. All kinds of gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hundreds of thousands of gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have a book called Seek the Gifts of the Spirit. And that just mentions 30 of the most prominent gifts. We'd be glad to send that to you. But there are hundreds of other ones. And you'll have all that power. And I don't mean natural power. Supernatural power. Power to heal sick people. Power to be healed yourself. Power to break through the worst situations. Power to move mountains. Power to speak in other languages. Power to interpret these languages. Power to discern evil spirits. Power to change the face of this earth. Power. Power from on high. Now, there's a lot more about the Holy Spirit. I just hit a few highlights. But I'm hoping it's getting you thirsty. I'm hoping you're saying, well, starting this program, he talked about being thirsty, and he said you're going to get the glass or jump in the swimming pool or, or jump in the rivers. Well, I, I wasn't about to jump in the rivers. I wasn't that thirsty, but I'm getting there. I'm about ready to jump in the river if he keeps talking. Well, I hope you are. I just hope you are. I can share my own testimony. Like I said, I, I stifled the Spirit terribly in my life in 1975. Uh, I went through a year trying to teach these kids in high school, and these kids are driving me crazy. I experienced such powerlessness, such helplessness, such frustration, and such depression. I was going through all these things. It wasn't God making me that way. I made myself that way by stifling the Spirit. But after doing that for a while, you know, I came to a point and say, God, I got to get, I got to, I have got to get some power in my life. I got to get a new life. I cannot go on like this, God. I am not going to just stay in this situation. I don't know what to do, but I have got to do something. So, you know, see, I was, I was just, after about a year of that, I was, I was thirsty. I was real thirsty for anything. And I was reading in the Bible as I prepared for a sermon the next day, a homily. Acts 1.14, it says, Together they devoted themselves to constant prayer while they were in the upper room uh, praying for the Spirit. And I read that and said, I I'll do anything. I'll do that. I was getting thirsty. So I started praying more, got a few people to pray with me. And the Lord, of course, was true to His Word. But that, 
you know, there was a number of things I didn't see it except in retrospect, where I cut back on the eating, and uh, I experienced um, the, the really the wages of my sin, at least in a minimal way. And uh, and these, these all these things are just coming together, and after a while, you know, I was getting thirsty, real thirsty, and of course the Lord proved His love, proved His Wonderful, wonderful love. So I hope you're getting thirsty. I sure hope you are. We're going to pray right now. You ready? Father, we just pray for everyone to be very thirsty. Lord, orchestrate the events of our lives. Lord, pull us out of the world, even against our will in some cases. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would um, just even give us some wages of our sins and and just let us see a picture of how good it could be if we just let the Spirit move. But Lord, any way, every way, several ways, all together, Lord, may we thirst for the Spirit like we've never thirsted before, like you want us to thirst. Thank you, Lord. Amen. knees at the throne of the Holy One Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days he is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor.